This show is brought to you by The Makery, the podcast network for makers. Welcome to Knife Talk, the first Knife Talk which we're doing live with video. Well, we did last week with Dharma Steel, but that was slightly different. Um, so, we're, yeah, we're going to try something very different. It's going to be fun. If you're just listening to the audio, it's fine. We're going to make this an audio podcast. Um, but, yeah, if those who do want to listen in live, they can also see our pretty faces and watch me get drunker and drunker through, through each episode <laughs> as well, which is always fun. So... Guys, how are we? How are we? Let's start with let's start with uh, Jeff this week. How are we? I'm am, I'm amazed that you've all the work that you've done. This is incredible. So my hat's off to you. And I'm wearing I'm wearing a hat. You know you can see that I'm not wearing a hat. So fine. Uh, I tell you, the Damascus Steel event was so amazing, and we're, I, I know we're going to go talk about that because it would be hard not to. It was such an incredible experience. Um, but before we get to that. I was a, it was a good week. I worked my my brains out. I was hand sanding a ton of knives, and I just actually finished uh, two minutes ago, which is great. And uh, I had a funny funny thing happen. I, I got a message uh, early from a good friend of mine who owns a uh, uh, one of these uh, facilities, and they're able to uh, they do these like games and stuff like that. So one of the things they have are they have like these axe throwing uh, lanes. So you go in and you spent, you know, you you rent space out and you're able to throw these axes. Well, apparently none of the axes were sticking in the wood. So I got this call and I said, hey, listen, can you help me out with something? I have these axes for this thing and, no, and nobody can, nobody's able to use the axes. The axes are, you know, they're spending money on renting the space and then the axes aren't sticking in the wood. What, were they blood? Well, yeah, bring one it? over and bring one over. I, to the listener, I'm a little bit. I have, I've got to say, this is incredible with the, the video and stuff again. I've got to like just control myself a little bit. So I <laughs> sharpen up the axes, and then they said, "Come meet us down here, and let's figure out what the problem is." The axes were sharp, and then they couldn't throw it in. And then, da, 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 da. and it, we're, is it the wood? What kind of wood is this? Poplar? Maybe we should use pine. Maybe we should. And all of a sudden, I just turned to like the CEO and the manager, and I said, "Maybe all this artificial glory isn't for everybody. Maybe, maybe this isn't." easy and this isn't for everybody and you know maybe we shouldn't be you know and i started to kind of like think about how the fact that you know you're supposed to be this big guy and you're throwing the wood and you know the axe into the wood and stuff like that and it just became this kind of like and then it turned out to be that they were the wrong axes it was like the stupidest thing so that was my uh axe talk for you know. <laughs> i did and see then... the a knife that you shipped this week um again with all the colors and so on very very nice with your with your green and blue colors you know yeah that went to colors. this i wasn't gonna I, this this is one we got we got we have people are this is a great this is amazing so yeah it went out to to this great chef uh elon hall he was the first winner of of top chef a great dude and um you know I, I was super he was super pumped and then we started talking about these old the old days in the restaurant business and people we knew and stuff like that. so you say super pumped good. or super pumped repeat please one more time I said, did you say super humped or super pumped? no i didn't say super humped no i said super pumped sure we about were, that? he was pretty pumped okay. he was pretty pumped so yeah it was a good weekend you know busy and um it was great it was great i'm cool, a little cool. distracted i'll be honest with you <laughs> I, 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 this, is, this is distracting because i'm really used to just like sitting in the car so people can't see me roll my eyes or move mm. or do anything and and uh it's gonna take some getting used to but i'm amazed i'm amazed it is gonna take some getting used to definitely but uh yeah. Mareko, what what about your uh your week how's it been the damage steel thing was obviously was as jeff already said it was pretty cool and a fun experience and you know i i think you guys were also saying it too like the time just flew by like three hours felt like nothing mm -hmm. uh and craig obviously hats off to you you did such a phenomenal job well, um, go on then. Go on then. Take the hat off. Yeah, you just, you did. Okay. So I'll just there say. There we go. <laughs> you did such a great job. Thank you so much. Uh, it was awesome. It was a lot of fun. You made it fun. I thought you did a great job. Like uh, Jeff said last week, you did a great job with Pear and just like making sure everything ran really well. And it was great. So, uh, so before I get into my week, though, I wanted to mention a couple of quick things that I've been seeing uh, on Instagram 
really quick is like uh so the new england school of metalwork always holds a hammer in um i think it's usually in like early july or something like that um mm -hmm. and they're not doing it this year so oh, if you okay. had plans to do that it's not happening um they're looking into and trying to figure out plans for getting things good for next year but right now that's off the table uh second thing second thing uh dr dave Darom, I'm going to, I probably screwed that up, which is terrible because he just passed away. He is an author. He's a, a custom knife collector. Um, if you've see, ever seen like um, the art of knife making or the art of custom folding knives or any of those kind of different books, he, he put together and published all those books. Um, he's from Israel and uh, he, he just has been a huge supporter and proponent of the, of the knife community and the craft. And uh, he just recently passed away, uh, which is a huge bummer. The The last big thing is Jordan Lamott. So Jordan Lamott, or Lamott is uh, a maker out of New York State. And uh, he got a scholarship or an award. It's like a fellowship award. Uh, it's called the Fulbright Award. And he's going to be traveling and spending time in India. I, th I think it's something like a month or a couple months. I don't know how long exactly. But he's going to be learning uh, this art form called kafgari which is essentially where you take the surface of your metal and you rough it up and then you kind of overlay precious metal like silver gold oh. you can do copper you can do all in a lot of the kafgari uh, i've ever seen are on large like uh indian swords like a tall war tall war or all these other crazy and like insane really uh, like super curvaceous swords or anything like that so Congratulations to him. So the biggest thing for me this past week has been uh, I put a knife up for raffle and that went really, really well. You raised um, a, a lot of money, didn't you? A lot of money. Cool. Uh, we Let's see if I can remember. It was $3,397.43. Wow. And um, yeah, totally blew me away. And it was all towards helping uh, the Loja United Way. They have uh, an emergency flood relief fund going on right now. And um, and so that was super awesome. And I want to give all, all the thanks to everybody who has supported either through donating or through uh, helping share that I had it going. It was all very last second. But like my sister got a hold of me and... Like the next day, I posted the thing, and then three days later, we did the raffle. Like it was, there was no planning around this. <laughs> so so um, who won? Who won? Share the share the details. Jesse Ueda. Hey. She's the winner, the big winner, 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 chicken dinner. I'm so, uh, you know, I'm glad that it's for everybody's support, and that I'm sure anybody it went to would really love and appreciate it. But I know she, as an as a maker, can really appreciate. Uh, the effort and the skill that goes into creating something like this, uh, which is a little uh, Brute to Forge bench knife. So last year when I did my uh, Forge in Place series, I before I even started like planning, kind of like uh, kind of scripting that out and figuring out all just like how I was going to the order of operations and filming and stuff like that. I just did one and took notes as I was moving along. And I happened to have this piece of uh, tidal wave mosaic Damascus that was like in the perfect little bar form to just do it with. And so I just did it and it came out great. And that, and so it's kind of been laying around the shop for the last year. And, uh, I've been trying to fi figure out, you know, if I was going to sell it or I don't know what I was going to do or if I was going to keep it. And then this all happened with the, the fundraiser. And I was like, fuck it, let's do it. Let's put it out there. And so again, cool. thank you everybody who helped support that. I really appreciate it. No, it's a cool thing to do, you know, to give your work, essentially giving your work away for charity, which which is which is very cool. For sure. Very yeah. cool. It was cool. It was really cool. Hmm. Yeah. So my week, um, fits and starts. Very little time in the shop this week. Um, basically, between the two houses, we got a lot of stuff on. So um, the big news was my two little girls started, well, they didn't start school this, this week. They went to school for the first time to meet the teachers and so on, ready for when they start in September. Um, it was heartbreaking, heartbreaking to see him going into school and uh, knowing that we're not going to be spending all days with them. But um, the school was cool, but it's very different here in France compared to schools in the UK. So in the UK, they they you know they'd give them you know, a couple of hours for the first day and all the rest of it. In France, they're long days, so it's it's eight thirty till four thirty. They just go in all day. They have a room where the kids sleep because I mean they're only two, 
So, you know, they sleep in the day. So they have a room and it's like a refugee centre. It was terrible. It was just like mattresses <laughs> all over the floor. Oh, it was, yeah, it wasn't the nicest. So it was something we need to get used to. Um, what else? How, Knife how, long wise, do they go, how long do they go for? They'll be going four days a week. Um, oh, but how many, t- how many hours a day? Full days, 8.30 to 4.30. That's a yeah. long day. Long, long, long day. day. Yeah. It's a long day for a little kid. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And for us, not having them around because, you know, we generally spend every minute of the day with them. So so it's going to yeah. be tough, but um, it's good that, you know, it needs to happen. They need to grow up, that kind of thing. So, yeah, so that's cool. Um, Knife-wise, um, I'm going to have two knives for sale next week. So um, in between all these restaurant orders that I've been doing, um, I've got two knives, which I'm just about to finish this weekend. Um, one is called Alien DNA. Um, and again, the, the, these one-offs knives that I do, they've always got some sort of theme. So this one is called Alien DNA and one is called Super Light. Um, and hopefully they'll both be available on Monday. Um, the super light's got carbon fiber handles. It's, it's really, really nice, actually. But um, cool. And the alien DNA has got this crazy, crazy, crazy handle. But um, yeah, what else? I'm doing a a live Instagram next week with a chef that I've been working with. Um, he's got two Michelin star restaurants in the UK. Um, Tommy Banks, he's also on the TV, that kind of thing. And um, I've supplied both of his restaurants now, thankfully. Um, and and a chef knife for him as well. So he wants to chat about how they're made, that kind of thing. So we can do a live together with his audience and mine. So something I've never done before, but should be should be quite fun. Um, but that's it. That's my sort of knife news for the week, really. Um, yeah, and we're doing this, which is which is bizarre. Being able to see but your faces, it's really really strange. <laughs> this really is really strange. This I'm is amazing off because you guys' faces usually. I give this is a perfect segue to go into Damage Steel because. You know, the last episode was probably one of our best episodes just because there was so much going on. But now Craig is, I mean, you're a genius. He, he, you decided to take the great experience we had at Dance Steel and kind of bring it here, which is going to be fun, make it fun. Matt Coates and, has just said he's only here to watch me get drunk in the, in the comments there. This is the problem. So <laughs> I don't know how you're going to, in the future, how you're going to be able to do this so people can watch it live. But there is a chat on the side, so we can actually we can see all the things that people are saying. Gary, whoa, whoa is in the house. Aubrey Hummer, Matt Coates, Gary Wah, uh, Matt, uh, Aaron McVeigh, Double D Knives, Moonshine Metalworks. We can see all these people, but I don't know how we can interact. We can't type. I mean, I can't unless you can. I can. Do I don't. Up. I don't know. What, yeah, you can't. Maybe. Yeah, um, it's fine. I can. It's better. Better but, off um, that. You know, yeah, but we'll yeah. I don't. Think there's any point. We we can we can see them and we can talk back to them, which is right. Which is cool. Which is cool. So, but, shall, sorry, Jeff. Go on. Go on. I was in. I was clumsily putting into the whole. So the last episode we had, we were going to have an episode on Friday. It just it didn't. There's a couple things. The audio was no good. But then all of a sudden we posted. We had such a good time at Damas Deal. It didn't make sense to kind of push off Damas Deal. So you were made the right call. Uh, Craig and we we put the damage steel show up on Monday and it was awesome. It was an awesome show and and I got to mm. hand it to you man. You you crushed it. You really crushed it. 3 hours just disappeared, didn't they? Really really quickly. I was yeah, thinking how are we going to fill 3 hours, but um it yeah, it happened very quick. We didn't even get a chance to speak to everybody. And at the end we were trying to rush people in for chats and you know, giving them a few minutes. It was it was hectic, but it was it was real good fun. Really enjoyed it. This, the part I felt the worst about is so. So the whole thing is is, Damas Steel did all. I mean, Damas Steel did an amazing job. I mean, Damas Steel did a really amazing job. And they, you know, we were going to talk about the fact that they didn't charge the attendees, which is amazing. They didn't charge the um, the invited invited the the invited the invited <laughs> knife makers. They didn't uh, the exhibitors take a cut. exhibitors. They didn't the exhibitors. They didn't they didn't take a cut at the end. And oh, wow. um, they, it was a great experience, it was a awesome experience. Um, I, I, the part that it made me very anxious, and I didn't think it would, was because all the knife makers had their own booths, and then mm. when they had their own booths, they had to man their booths. So if they came on to our show or decided to watch our show, I was feeling like this, like nervousness, like this nervous mother saying, you know, you should go back to your booth. You should be selling <laughs> yeah. knives. What are you doing yeah. here? You know, why are you having fun? This isn't supposed to be fun. You're supposed to be selling knives. You don't have much time left. 
I got very anxious about it. We tried our best to sort of help them and push people to their booths, but it we wanted to be the like the kitchen of the party, didn't we? We wanted to be the cool place where people would come, <laughs> we could all have a laugh, and 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 I think it worked. They they've invited us back again, um. So yeah, so that so that should be good. Should that's be a good. perfect analogy. The kitchen of the party. Yeah, I think that's where that's where all the cool stuff happens. That's yeah. when yeah. that's where uh, Fingal came in drunk. <laughs> Fingal came in. <laughs> yeah, he's all done. <laughs> he's done, and he's just like, all right, let's, let's tie one up. Yeah. <laughs> Craig, Craig Bell is that homebrew you drink it? It's not. It's not, unfortunately. Um, that's all in the, the other house now. So I've got like a portable keg system here. So yeah, straight from the keg. Um, yeah, Fingal had a very good show, didn't he? He, uh, <laughs> um, he sold out all his knives, which is incredible. So yeah, you could you could tell he had that excitement coursing through his veins when he came onto the show, and it was yeah, it was all good, all good. The one thing I'd say, the reason why it went so well, there's, I felt like it was like a perfect storm. And one of the reasons why is because we actually knew most of the knife makers, which is, you know, we knew most of them. I mean, I would say we knew, I mean, like we'd either talk to or interact with about 75% of the, the exhibitors. Mm. And the fact that they had to be there helped too. I mean, we had, I mean, we had everybody on for the most part, and then they had them on all the time. And I don't think it would have worked if we, if they weren't forced to be there. Yeah. You know? Right. Yeah. I, I'm sure some of the people listening now, and maybe even some of the people in the chat, uh, were there. Did anybody see Tyler at all? Um, Tyler Florence? Because there's rumors he didn't turn up. There's rumors he did. Nobody really knows. I Is heard he from. I poked around because that was the whole thing. You know, we promoted Tyler Florence, and. Uh, where is this guy? So I did poke around with Damastil. Damastil sent me this real nice message. I think he probably sent it to all of us. And then we were having this nice conversation. And, and the fact remains that they told us that we raised the uh, the attendees by 45%, which is an astonish astonishing. Yeah, so cool. congratulations to us because we brought the people in. <laughs> but then all of a sudden, it's just like, where's Tyler? So I thought, well, let me go ask. Because it's, as far as I was concerned, nobody saw him. And then I send this message that took maybe a couple of extra days to get responded back. I think they were trying to figure out the right wording, but he said, oh, they're being he political. Over, yeah, <laughs> he, he was. Oh, he something happened, but then he was over with Galen. And, and I was like, <laughs> I leave it alone. But it was just like, as far as I was concerned, I was just like, you know, yeah. nothing. So. Steve um, Moonshine Metalworks just said that he's in his kitchen at the moment making fish tacos using one of Jeff's knives. Yeah. It's okay, Steve. We know who your favorite is. It's fine. It's fine. Myself well, and Michael I mean, may have if, knives if, available too. I'm if, just saying. But if you, Alex Pohl, if Alex Pohl reached out to you to make knives for his crew, then then that would have been a different story, wouldn't it? <laughs> it would have been. It certainly would have been. Yeah, yeah. So shall we get on with like the main part of the show? Um, yeah. You know what we're here to do, really, um, which is to sell our advertisers. Knife Talk is sponsored by <laughs> Even Heat, the manufacturers of the finest heat treat ovens available. To find your next oven, go to evenheat-kiln.com. And actually don't. Go to Soul Ceramics because they're a, an Even Heat distributor, and we can get you a discount. We can get you $75 off and free shipping in the States. If you go to knifetalk.net forward slash heat, it'll take you to Soul Ceramics, and it'll automatically apply all those discounts for you. Um, so go there. You can spec out the machine that you want. They'll build it for you, and they'll ship it to you for free if you're in the States. Even if you're not in the States, you can still get a $75 off. So go go do it. There we go. Um, shall we take some questions? Sure. And hey, man, take... can I ask you a question? So we could also, at this point, we could take questions from the chat. We can. We can. In fact, I'm going to take this one because this is obviously directed to me. Craig, I'm still waiting on my steak knives. Dylan, um, send me an email um, is probably best. Um, rather than contact, this is the problem of having a show like this, isn't it? Um, yeah, send me an email and um, I'll, I'll see what's going on with your order. Cheers. Oh, Jesus, yeah, we're taking customer, customer service, service uh, podcast. Customer. Oh, oh, my I've god, got, I've, got, I've swear. got a customer, customer service story to say, which was going to be a beef, but I'm going to do it now. Um, so, um, we're getting internet sorted in the new house, and um, you need to use Orange over here. They're Orange, they, they supply all the phone lines and all the rest of it. So they should have been here last week. I took the whole day off. Um, they couldn't give me a time of day, so I needed need, need to be there for 8.30 in the morning, and, and, and you know, I'd spent all day there. They didn't arrive. So I called up on Monday and said, look, he didn't come. They said, okay, we're coming tomorrow. Went there the whole day, didn't come. 
Um, so then I phoned up and I said, well, what's going on? They said, well, no apologies at all. And they were like, well, we, we can get somebody out to you. They'll, make, they'll give you a phone call within 10 days and they'll come out. I'm like, well, what's different? Because they haven't come out the last two times. I can't afford to take any more time off work. And she said, oh, nothing different. That's just the way we do things. And I'm like, well, you know, this can't happen. And she said, well, maybe, Mr. Lockwood, this isn't the service for you. And that was it and cancelled the whole order. Oh, <laughs> Is that the worst customer Jesus. service ever? It was... Uh, oh, my yeah, God. Not a good one. Not a good one. So, yeah, Orange France, you're not in my good books. Uh, Jeremy Dingman. Mareko, <laughs> unblock me on Instagram. <laughs> I've got a brand new account when I follow I'd... you. <laughs> Yeah, I'm trying to pull it up right now. <laughs> this is gonna I don't take even see them on Instagram. That's the problem. They don't have a handle. It's not uh, the, the handle isn't Jeremy Dingerman. Figure out. Probably this Jeremy is gonna Dingleberry. take some time for us to figure out, but yeah, yeah. yeah. This yeah, we're we're doing customer service for this first half an hour. This right. is gonna be now. This we have to keep <laughs> account of how many people you've have to like unblock because now that's two. You've had two <laughs> right, two oh, yeah. uh, two begging. Just to be clear. Food. Usually the reason I block people is because they're excessively tagging me in their posts right. instead of me just naturally seeing the posts right. or whatever. They're tagging me to make sure that I see it. And I'm like, listen, I, I'm but sorry. Can... I got like. <laughs> but now Jeremy. now here's your chance, listeners, Demon. to, oh, okay. to, to right. beg, to beg for forgiveness. Beg for it back. <laughs> now you yeah. can beg for forgiveness. So it'll be, you know, it'll be great. Uh, Let's go back to hey our man, main thing, which is... Can I ask you a question? Questions. Um, we've had lots of questions during the week um, via Instagram, DMs. So if you've got a question to ask us... Contact us via DM at Knife Talk Podcast on Instagram. It's that easy. It's like we've got Brian right here with us, isn't it? Um, Jeff, do you want to read out the first one? Uh, yes. Uh, here we are. The first one comes from Andy Beatty. Andy Beatty says, hey, guys, I've got a question. When grinding without a rest, does, 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 does the direction of the, your belt in, is... <sighs> Andy, um, <laughs> when the grinding without a rest, does the direction of your belt change the work being done on your knife? So does belt direction make a difference? Hmm. Um, I, I only ever grind with the belt coming down towards the floor um so to me it'd make a huge difference because i i, I never you know grind the other way um Mareko, do you ever do you ever reverse your belt for any reason i never reverse the belt but i do grind my blade edge up and edge down and you the blade or the belt does grind kind of engaging it engages slightly differently so say the belt is running vertically like it normally does going down if you were to zoom in like with a microscope or something what you would see is the belt kind of bumping out a little bit as it slows down from coming into contact with your blade and what that does is it creates it, it just changes the way it interacts with the material but on the bottom side of that it's just running straight free and so that's why sometimes i'll grind edge up or if i need to refine things then i'll actually flip the blade edge down if i'm trying to get a finer geometry then i'll grind edge down because with an edge up that little bump will give you a false sense of thinness because the belt's binding up but you could actually probably go twice as thin if you cut or if you turn the edge down and grind edge down Right. Okay. I've never even thought of that grinding the other way. My thing is always the visual side. You know, if you're if you're above the knife looking down, I can oh, see, yeah. see what I'm grinding. Yeah, when you're when you're edged down, it's definitely blind and it's more of a feel thing. And but I'm not standing there just like hogging grr, 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 forever. I I literally I'll make contact <laughs> for a couple seconds and then I'll look and then I'll check grind some more and I'll look and then, and so I'm checking like every two, three seconds. Yeah. Because it is more of a a feel thing for sure. That's what she said. God, <laughs> gonna, this is gonna be the end of us. That was that was a cheap cheap one. <laughs> I the one thing I notice is is when I, I've been doing more freehand grinding. I freehand grind all now. That I usually go from the left side and then I switch hands and go from the right side. And sometimes I do notice that my left side moves in a different pattern. So I'm getting two different belt uh, 
it's just the the direction of the, it's not the direction of the belt it's my arm it's like the different like the dominant arm is doing something a little bit tiny bit different than the than the yeah lesser, i know what you mean lesser arm yeah, yeah. so and yeah i'm just looking through the, the comments here and we see the youtube and the facebook comments together and sean i'll just put it up here sean has just said I like this. And it's the irony of being on Facebook and actually typing, I like this, <laughs> when you can literally press the like button, which is quite funny. Yeah. Anyway, that was just my sense of humor. Um, we've got a question here from uh, Bernard, which has literally just come through. Uh, newbie here, really enjoying the podcast, but listening backwards, so it's like a time machine. Uh, Craig, it's France, what do you expect? <laughs> yeah, it's completely right. Everything is pretty slow here. So Bernard's just started, and he's going backwards. They're going to get progressively worse for you, Bernard. You, yeah. might want to, you might want to miss a few months, maybe. <laughs> yeah, definitely. Uh, That's um, when you guys start a new podcast, do you listen to whatever episode turned you on to that podcast and then jump to the back? Or you just kind of listen progressively backwards? Or how do you listen? Oh, that was like a proper YouTuber then, Morocco. Get an engagement. I like it. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm asking you guys. Too. I know you both listen to podcasts. Um. I generally listen to the most recent, and if it's good, I'll then go back. But if I go back, I'll generally go back to like episode one, season one kind of thing, you know? Yeah. Um, because quite often there's in jokes and references that would develop over time. But um, yeah. And and in fact, I did that this week. So I was listening to um, uh, Louis Theroux. I, do, do you know Louis Theroux in the, in the States? You'd mentioned, I'd heard of him before, yeah. He's a, a documentary maker in the UK, but he goes to the States to do a lot of his stuff. But he's great because he plays really, really dumb. But he's very, very intelligent. So he plays dumb <laughs> and he gets like the best interviews, that kind of thing. Um, and he's done this podcast called um, Grounded for the BBC. And the whole idea is he's at home and he's doing this podcast and he gets other sort of celebrities, I suppose. Um, but most of them are like quite friendly with him. He already knows them. So they're because they're at home as well. It's a real sort of it's a phone call between two friends almost. Um, mm. And the, it, it, they get really candid. It, it's really nice, really nice. It's uh, so yeah. So Jet, sorry. Back to the question. I would listen to the most recent, and if I like it, I'd go back to season one, episode one. Sure. Yeah, I do the same thing. Unless it's something like I listen to like some news or economy or business podcasts too. And so when I'm doing those, I'm trying to listen to whatever's most recent because they're obviously time sensitive. Yeah. Um, but otherwise, when it's more kind of like telling stories or conversation, you, you can kind of start all over. And I, I do like going back to the beginning, though, usually. And mm. um, yeah, same thing you do. We've got um, Double D Knives here. I started episode one of Knife Talk and worked my way all the way to this live. The only podcast I've done that for. Wow. Thank you. Thank you. Double S D Knives. Sorry, son yes. of a bitch, you. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> a lot of episodes. We've got a question in the chat here for you, Jeff. <laughs> okay. Is Jeff in the passenger seat or the driver's seat? Jeff is in the driver's seat. So there is, I've tr I actually have a really nice chair that I'm super uncomfortable sitting in. And this Jeep has got the leather seats. It's clean. It sounds good. And now I'm kind of lighting it from the outside. And I'm most comfortable here. And it's like, it's like a lounge chair and I'm comfortable. And I'm in the, I'm going to be, I'm going to be in this Jeep until it's dead. If you yeah. had good cell signal, you could do this mobile. You could go like through a through a car wash, and you could do all these. Crazy <laughs> the problem is, the problem is, then you'd hear like all the nonsense. See, the whole thing is, it's a room inside of a room. Yeah, and it's yeah. like you hear like I can't even have the outside door because you'd hear the fire engines. Yeah, you, you'd so. be the James Corden of the knife world. Right. Just, yeah. Right. Carpool karaoke. Right? Does anybody need any more James oh, Corden? Jesus. Fucking guy. I tell you, in regards to, I mean, the full blast podcast, I try to make them standalone oh, here episodes. Go. Here we go. Well, I, I took after you, Craig, you little <laughs> bastard. You, you know, Knife Talk was originally standalone episodes. So I thought I'd rather people have standalone episodes than mm. something that you have to like, what is that? It's fun to listen to podcasts and then you, it's fun to know the people and get to understand the people. And it's fun to like have the inside track, but some things are so inside that you have no idea what the hell's going on. So yeah. I really wanted it to be very like easy to do. Uh, uh, and in the chat, by the way, there, there, there's a third person who now officially a third person who wants you to un unblock him. Mareko. I haven't seen <laughs> Matt any Matt says benefits of watching the live I'm stream. completely blind to that whole side. 
Also, yeah. you oh, you don't see the chat? You don't see the chats at all? No, I've just I've been listening to your guys' conversation. I haven't been. Well, it's at the all chat. distracting. It's all distracting. Yeah. We're gonna. It's gonna take a while to figure this all out. But uh, Matt, did you watching. mean dick pics instead of sick pics? Is that what you meant to type? Yeah. So Matt Coates, that's that's the third person who's begging for forgiveness. I love that. That should be a an, an whole bit. <laughs> who you know, time to you know kiss the kiss the ring, <laughs> kiss the ring, and ask for forgiveness. That's what she said. Okay, let's do. Hey, man. Another question. Can I ask you a question? Do you want to read the next one, Morocco? Yeah, this one's from Will. Uh, Will Jacob it says, "Hey man, I have a question. If you could pick anyone, what uh, what would be your ultimate collaboration between two to three makers? This is for all three of you. Uh, my ultimate collaboration would be with Iron Maiden. Uh, would be Iron Maiden Forge, Andrea De Leon, De Leon and Leah uh, Arapach. Arapach. I could not like mm. wrap my head around those." letters uh so is us is this us doing a collaboration with them yeah. or no, just three you're, you're picking your 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 ultimate team mm. that you're not involved with so you're picking your right. three two to three people that you like to see do a collaboration sure hmm. do you guys do you guys know I'd like to have all three of the people you blocked do a collaboration. <laughs> <laughs> the beg for, the beg for special charity knife. That would be cool. Back, yeah, the beg for forgiveness knife. That's what I yeah, like. Yeah, actually, you, you guys do a charity knife while I'm blocking them. <laughs> <laughs> you know? Um, I would like to see... So, one maker I, I, whose work I really, really admire is uh, Andrew Mears. He's super... He's just incredibly talented it's like out insane. of this world totally it's insane. it's insanity it just doesn't even make make sense i would love to see him and uh mike quinn's mike quisenberry um and i'm trying to think who would be number three they must have already done a collaboration together yeah. uh i don't think they have Mears but i would like to see jason I, i'll knight. throw somebody oh jason what I th- I'm sorry for interrupting. I mean, I think Mears did something with Jason Knight. Yes, he has. That's true. Hmm. What about you, Jeff? Can I, can, Who's can go I ahead. No, Mareka. I interrupted Mareka. What were you saying? <laughs> <laughs> um, and then I think I would like to throw in like Lynn Ray. So both Mike Quisenberry and Lynn Ray are super talented forgers, but they they forge very different styles. And I would like to see those two, uh, along with Andrew Mears, kind of see what kind of magic they all three of those guys could work cool cool jeff who you got i think i'm gonna go outside say pardon me your mount rushmore as you would say i'm gonna go not what you'd think i'm gonna think i'm gonna go with um i was gonna go with fred christ is one of my favorite blacksmiths who i actually was fortunate enough to know he's a traditional blacksmith he was one of the last blacksmiths to be to run the samuel yellen shop and and he's just like and he's a fine artist too so he's really been able to straddle the fence in terms of traditional blacksmithing plus you know fine arts and stuff like that i'd like to get some non-knife makers to be in a collaboration so i guess i could go fred christ Mm -hmm. then i would do um fred christ let's go let's go fred christ will stelter because you know, how do you not like Will Stelter? Will Stelter, he's, a, he's such a great kid. Will Stelter, Fred Christ, and and Don Wynn. Nice. There you go. That's my fucking. That's a. That would be a. That'd be a wild, wild Terrible lineup. Group. Wild group. So we're not involved in this. We we're not picking people who we'd like to work with. We're picking people who were, who okay. Right. Um. If we could get to see their process. Um. Yeah. Mine would be very different to you two because I don't forge. Um, I wouldn't say I'm not interested in forging in those styles of knives, but it's, it's not my style at all. Um, and what I'm particularly wanting to do now is is sort of up my production without losing quality. Um, and I think the people who do that amazingly well are Fingal, we've already mentioned. Um, amazing quality, and he does so many great, great knives, like every week. It's, it's unbelievable. Um, Toma, which we always mention, he has basically got a a factory going there churning out amazingly high quality knives um and jeff i think you too um because you've got this work ethic that i'd that i'd love to have which i cut which i don't have so if i get to see the process 
I think you'd be Jeff, Toma, and Fingal. And that'd be a hell of a party too. I'd want to go to the after show to that one. So, um, yeah, very different to you two guys. Um, but mine is more about the sort of production, I suppose, as opposed to the final, the final thing. I forgot to tell you, I when I went to Barcelona two years ago, I brought back some parts, and I actually put together this week a Florentine kitchen knife that I finished, but then with one of my handles. And it's gluing up right now, so I, I'm not gonna I'm not gonna post it to sell it. It's gonna be there. There were some problems. I had some. This isn't something. I got enough problems. It's gonna stay with me. But it's uh, it was uh, I sent it to picture to him, and he kind of like freaked out. It was great. Mm, it did look. So, I did see the picture. It looked. Oh, it I looks, sent. Did I send it to you? You did. It's yes, like yeah. it's not 100 percent finished, but it's like it's gonna be there. There's some glue so up it, to do. It's and definitely I feel yours. left out. I never saw it. I didn't know. I'll send it to you. I'll, I'll put it in the group chat. It's not. I mean, it wasn't. It was in not finished condition. Yeah, it's definitely your style. But it's, right. as you can see, it's clearly um, Toma's work as well. So it's 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 nice. It's very nice. It's definitely weird. Mm. Um, Jamie. Oh wait, awesome. look another. We got another one. We have another one. I feel left out. Mareko, can you ban me on? Oh, people want to be banned by you, so they. Now Mareko, <laughs> so, so they can be unbanned. They, yeah. So they can be unbanned. Yeah. <laughs> James McKee, what are you drinking, Craig? That. That's a very French glass. It's not. It's a it's a brew dog glass, which is a very sort of UK or well, Scottish thing. But it's a very sort of classic beer glass, I suppose. But it's a French beer, so it's Pelfort, which is like cheap ass French beer. Um, unfortunately. unfortunately. French PBR. PVR. What's PBR? PBR. Pabst Blue Ribbon, baby. Yeah. It's like uh kind of a notch below. <laughs> Budweiser, Budweiser. <laughs> really? Oh, I love it. I mean, I when I was drinking I beer, I loved it. But Sandy, so, it's from Young Knives. We haven't heard from Sandy in a long, long time. Even we got James, a lot of people in the we got a lot of people in the uh, in the group chat. It's super cool. Timo's mm. here. Young Knives, J Jamie Mackey, Wyag Knives from Australia, Matthew Angel, Brian's here just to hear his own voice. That's the reason Brian. Uh, yeah. Contact Matt, us via Matt DM good. at Knife Talk Podcast on Instagram. It's that easy. This is this has become very meta all of a sudden. This is I'm gonna block Matt Angel straight. real quick. Matt Angel PBR is trash. <laughs> He's being blocked. <laughs> he, Matthew <laughs> Angel might also be Matt the Wangle. Matt the Wangle. Oh yeah. Ah, okay. Okay. That makes a lot of sense. Oh look who's here. <laughs> Moon, Phil, uh, listen, guys. We got, we have Chris Cash of Mount Phillip Metalworks in the house. That's nice. crazy. If you're listening live, he's got a oh, he's Brian, got a really good. awesome. Um, he's gonna have a sale at his shop, so go follow him. He's gonna have a sale on Saturday. If you're listening to this on Monday, you're fucked. But yeah, Chris is the man. So this is this is wild. We're gonna have to really figure this whole out because like. It's like all these dangling, shiny things are in the yeah. way. Yeah, and... it's a lot of new stuff to get our eyeballs around. But um, whilst we're talking about having sales... Combat Abrasives makes the world's best abrasive belts for knife makers. Available in any size at unbelievable prices. Go take a look at CombatAbrasives.com and get 15% off with promo code KNIFETALK15. You know, we're Do gonna... it now! <laughs> We're going to have to get videos, you know, from our sponsors, because otherwise it's just us looking dumb right. at the camera whilst we're here with the audio. But um, Combat <laughs> Braces, we all use them. I'm sure most of the people in the chat are using it as well. Um, make sure you use Knife Talk 15 and get 15% off, which is a sure. hell of a bargain. Hell of a bargain. I think Brian's in the house, actually, right now. Brian, house Brian in the house. house. In the house. In the yes. house. Jeff, do you want to read out the next question that we have? Uh, sure. Um... Okay, this one comes from. Hold on a second. I went. I, my my fingers did a little did a little bit of walking. Uh, John Ravalier Ravali says, "Hey man, can I ask you a question? I'm a relatively new maker, and when I'm forging, I seem to get a lot of slag on the metal decarb, not the British slag, not the British slag. Ha ha ha. I do brush it off, but is there something I should be doing differently to prevent it from forming?" Thanks. Love the show. So first off, do you know what slag is in Britain? No. I think <laughs> I probably it's like a slag a slapper. Is that exactly like a slapper? Somebody, somebody of very loose morals, yeah. Right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um I I don't, you know, have that issue. 
<laughs> You're not <laughs> because I don't because I don't fold. So uh, Morocco, oh. maybe this is a good one for you. <laughs> yeah, I would say um, I would say not allowing your blade to sit and soak at the high temperature. Un, un, like longer than it needs to um because you're foraging so you're trying to get work done while it's hot and you don't you don't need to over soak it unless it's unless you're like forge welding or something that's very different but if you're just forging blade out of mono steel um all you got to do is just forge it evenly um you know as the steel cools down you'll want to start hitting it lighter which will which are planishing blows jeff can speak to planishing blows which is a, kind of a, a, a blacksmithing technique uh, but that also helps break up that that forge scale that builds up on the outside of the blade as you forge the blade out um i can't really think of much else other than just to forge evenly on both sides that way you're breaking off the scale off both sides as well as planishing blows um, at the end of your forging is also another kind of nice chance to, as you're thermal cycling and um, kind of straight doing like straightening heat cycles, those are a good chance to kind of get some extra brushing in and, and, and breaking off that forge scale as well. What's that trick where you throw a little bit of uh, water on the end? I don't know that trick. I mean, I'm aware <laughs> of the trick. I don't do it. I've never done oh, that. But I mean, the idea is you throw a little, I mean, I, I've seen it done and it's very exciting, but you throw a little water on the anvil and you put the thing down and it claps, makes this loud explosion. And I'm under the impression that that helps take some scale that's, off too. Yeah, it's a Japanese. Well, I actually, I mean, I think it's most well known as a tra Japanese forging technique, but essentially what they'll do is they'll take their hammer and they'll dip it in the water and then lay it out across the anvil and get a little extra moisture on there. And that that water on the surface of the anvil between the hot blade and the force of forging is supposed to, yeah, it helps blow off the forge scale. I've, I've never really had an issue with that. So I just, I've never really tried it. It's a cool effect. I mean, it sounds like a gunshot going off. It's wild. Yeah. It's intense. But, and uh, if you got people standing around, make sure they got eye protection on because <laughs> I, when I was actually at the New England School of Metalwork, Nick Rossi did that as part of his demonstration of forging. <laughs> ended up hitting a few of the students like in the face, like with the hot scale in the water. Yep. Chris Cash is saying that uh, he he's he's got Ilya in his shop, and he says I work with a Russian guy that uses that take technique every day. I know. Right. I know. It's also not necessarily eye protection, but it's penis protection because if it's for a dick level, you might get it in the. It's a cheech, you know what I'm saying? You're wearing a yeah. kilt. I don't wear a kilt, but if I did, I'd put a cup on too. Call yourself <laughs> a knife maker. You don't wear a kilt. No wonder you've never been on forged in fire. I don't have a Jeez. beard either. <laughs> so we've done a bunch of questions um, for everybody else. Do you think it's time, maybe, that we could? Uh oh. <laughs> some suspense so what do you think should we have a little quiz again do it do it let's do it okay who's gonna go first morocco or jeff well, he's well, the winner he makes the decision time. you but you you're the champion so you make the choices hmm you know what i'll go first again i don't care boy if we can ask everybody <laughs> in the chat um please don't um give any answers away unless you just pause the chat um i don't think uh, i can I can't think mm -hmm. I can. That's fine. It's fine. Um, I'll ignore them. Basically, we're going to give Morocco five questions. They get progressively harder, but he's got two lifelines. So he can either ask the audience, which are the people in the chat, mm -hmm. or he can phone a friend and we can phone somebody live on the show and hopefully they can help him out. Who knows? Who knows? Let's build a bit of tension. Morocco, are you ready? Sure. If soccer is called football in the UK, what is American football called in the UK? Is it A, soccer? Is it B, American soccer? Is it C, American football? Or is it D, sport ball? <laughs> I, I, I would love for it to be B or D, but I'm pretty sure it's C, American football. 
Is that your final answer? It is. Correct. One out of one. Well done. Okay. Let's take a breath. <laughs> you seem like you're out of breath over that one there, Greg. <laughs> I've got a lot of things going on here, believe me. <laughs> I've got three different screens on with three different things on. And I'm switching. Oh, crazy. Morocco, are you ready for question number two? I am. A doctor with a PhD is a doctor of what? A, philosophy. B, psychology. C, phrenology. Or D, physical therapy. Interesting. Is uh, it interesting? Is it really interesting? <laughs> interesting. <laughs> uh, I'm going to go B, psychology. You're going with B. The answer is A, philosophy. But you really? Can have a, you can have a PhD if you're like an English, if you're an English major. That's what um, I was kind of confused by. <laughs> I suppose PhD a, over is here this, is used is as like, a very general term. Like Polish who wants to be a millionaire? <laughs> <laughs> you could, I suppose you could be a doctor with a PhD in music theory as well. Yeah. But, uh, but in, in, the, in the school of doctors we're talking, you know? Okay. Gotcha. Morocco bowed out after question one. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, do I get a bonus if I, I can tell you what phrenology is? I mean, go on, Ed, go on. Go on. Go on. It is. Jeff just gave it away. It's what the study it? of the sutures on your head and, and the bumps and reading all that stuff. It's, a, it's like astrology, but it's reading your bumpy skull. <laughs> lock okay. it in, Craig. Why, okay, cu why custom says lock it in? Lock it in, Craig. We're locking it in <laughs> on one, but we are going to get to the end just so um, we'll know if you did get any more. But basically, you've got one point. That's all you have in. But we are, go <laughs> we are going to rush through the other questions with you. Okay. So. Why don't attention. you? Uh, okay. Bit of attention. Question number three. I say that was a lame question. What's the tallest <laughs> okay. mountain in Canada? Oh, Mount no. Tremblant, Mount Logan, I'm out. Whistler Mountain, or Blue Mountain? Oh, I would say Whistler, but I, that's the only one I've ever heard of. Fucking hell, you're out again. <laughs> Good thing. <laughs> it's Mount Logan. Mount Logan. All that's right. that's who they. I mean, if you want some nerd stuff, that's who. The, that's what they named uh, the Wolverine character after Mount Logan. Really. Yep. Really? Oh yeah, I so, guess he was supposed. To, he is Canadian. The character is that's Canadian. from the comic book. I remember back in the day. Who cares? This knife talk is some bullshit. That's good. That's good. What that's, do you mean, I who like cares? That. I put a lot of effort into. I this. mean, I'm just who like talking. No, I, when I say who cares, I mean like I'm bringing up a fucking dumb point about a fucking mountain in Canada. Nobody cares about my stupid point. That's what I'm saying. Who cares what I have to say about a mountain in comic books? Let's go to question four anyway, and this is just for shits and giggles now because we all know that Morocco finished on one question. Big fat loser. What is considered the rarest form of color blindness? Is it blue, red, green, or purple? I don't know. Red. Guess right. It's not. It's blue. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not even going to get the first one right. It's blue, and it's actually called Triton Omelie. Triton normally. Um, okay. People who don't see blue. Uh, apparently, you see blue everywhere, most people. So, if you don't see blue, it's very, very rare. Okay. And is it interesting? <laughs> 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 okay. Number five. <laughs> How many moon landings have there been? Manned moon landings, sorry. Right. The right answer is zero. It's been fake the whole time. <laughs> fake the whole time. I'm going to say three. Oh, Jesus. You're wrong again. <laughs> yeah, I thought it was one. That's why I would have used, definitely used my uh, my my resources on those yeah. last three. It was three. six, I'm afraid. <laughs> it, it was six? six. Um, Fucking, so you're telling me there were six landings on the moon? Manned. Wow. Yeah, six manned. There, there's nine Apollo missions. They didn't all make it. There's nine but, Apollo missions. But they so went on the moon? On the moon. On was, the moon. I'm, this I'm, is where people in the chat now start Googling this, like St. Craig, you're full of shit. But uh, that, this, this is what I, I, <laughs> I found millionaire. these questions online. So who knows? Who knows? Um, Jeff, are you ready? Go for it. Polish millionaire. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, we'll stop that. It gets boring very quickly. Um, Jeff, number one. Oh, for what is the scientific sake. name of the kneecap? 
Is it All A, right. I know it's Forum okay. and Magnum? Is it B, Fema? Is it C, Patella? Or is it D, Scapula? I'm going to say A. <laughs> is that wrong? <laughs> it's too late. <laughs> it's extremely wrong. It's extremely wrong. Well, it's not the scapula, and the femur is in your leg, and the patella is a tendon. The yeah, patella is your kneecap. It's it's C, patella. Oh, for fuck's sake. Jeez, well, I'm working with, I'm working with was... dummies here. Don't Holy work with shit, animals, I didn't even get a chance. To... Or Morocco <laughs> and Jeff. I, think I wasn't even going to use my <laughs> lifeline. <laughs> How are you going to use it? Congratulations, Mareko, you won. What can I say? One zero. The reigning Fucking chance. hell. I'm sorry. Oh, I man. am sorry. I'm Let's... sorry. You know what? I'll tell you who I'm sorry to. I'm sorry to Will Stelter. They sent Will Stelter a message saying, we're going to be doing Who Wants to Be a Millionaire, and I might need a lifeline. Okay. And can I... right. He says, well, what time is it going to be around? I'm like, I don't know. And I'm thinking, I'm ah, bugging poor Will Stelter. And then I could have <laughs> called him for fucking Patella, but I know he wouldn't have known Patella. So I Let's zip through them. Let's zip through them anyway. You can still call well if you need to. This is Jesus. just for shits and giggles. We have a winner, which is Morocco. Question number two. What was the oldest Disney film, Jeff? I'm going to say Snow White. Correct. Correct. Oh, my oh, God. We're Jesus with... Christ. Yeah, Rainy Day Forge. You, where were you when I needed your help, fucking guy? <laughs> These Canadians. These Canadians, they're all big help when they, when they after the fact. Number Canadians. three. What I've spelled that wrong. What is the capital of Indonesia? And don't say I. Don't say I. The capital of Indonesia. Is it A, Jakarta? Is it B, Bandung? C, Medan? Or D, Palembang? It's A, Jakarta. It certainly is. You're on a roll now. Fuck. Yeah, There's no pressure lost on anyway. you. There's no pressure on you now. If that's what it is, I think. I lost anyway. <laughs> Number four. What name represents the letter M? in the NATO phonetic alphabet. M? Is it Max, Matthew, Mark, or Mike? Mike. Are you sure? Matthew. Yeah. Do you think it's Mike? <laughs> Correct. Jesus oh, Christ. If I only fucking called up Will in the beginning. <laughs> God, question number five. Question number five. And if you're in the audience, don't answer, but we do have an audience question coming up in a minute as well, which is fastest fingers first for the audience. Um, so, Jeff, this is your final question. All right. I hope you don't know it and you need to ring a friend because this is a whole bit. Do you <laughs> want me to ring a friend? Should we call up Will anyway? <laughs> let's hang up on let's, him? let's see. Let's see. Question number five. In the movie Blade... <laughs> that was the wrong button, clearly. In the movie Blade Runner, what is the term used for human-like androids? Is it A, replicants? Is it B, cyclones? Is it C, synthetics? Or is it D, which is my favorite, skin jobs? I bet you like skin jobs. <laughs> it's replicants. I would have run the whole fucking thing if it was a guy named Patella. Yeah. Replicants. I should have gone second. Well done. <sighs> so you would have won the whole have... thing. Would Let's, you ring Patella? Will. Let's ring Will and see if he knew question one. Oh, yeah. Because if so, so okay. yeah, you will call Will now. up and see if he knew that. <laughs> See so there's you... the question. Okay. So let's have a look. Let's see we'll fake this whole thing. Yeah. We'll fake this whole thing. <laughs> Let me find him. Just a second. Where and is And then he? hang Where up on him. And then hang up on him. <laughs> we... Oh, yeah. I've got to hang up. Let me just a second. Oh, of course. Delta. Come on. And to... we're going to pretend like this is dire peril. Everybody yeah. in the audience, we're going to pretend this is peril. Okay. And I need your help. Bear hopefully, with me a second. Hopefully, he's not watching live. He's not watching live. <laughs> Stelter, here we go. Accounts, well, Stelter, here we go. This, this is good radio. This. <laughs> Don't worry, everybody in the chat. It'll be fine. He's not listening. He's busy doing something important, and we're gonna bother him. We're ringing well. We're ringing well. How funny would that be if he doesn't pick up even, even after he and I went after it a little bit? I don't think he's picking up, I'll be honest. Oh, with for you. fuck's sake. It's ringing. <laughs> God damn it. He's picked up. He has picked up. Hello. Is that Will Stelter? It is. Howdy, howdy. Will, do not say fuck or bugger. You are live on the Knife Talk podcast. And we're playing <laughs> Who Wants to Be a Millionaire? 
You know me. I just use those words so much. <laughs> Jeff needs your help. Oh. Jeff is stuck on a million dollar question. Um, oh, man. I'm going to pass this over to Jeff. You're going to have the, when he starts talking, you've got 30 seconds to answer the question and then we're out of here. But he needs your help desperately. Jeff, over What's to you. Up? Jeff, over to you. Will, oh. I appreciate your call. What is the scientific name of the kneecap? Is it A, Fornamen Magnum, B, Femur, C, Patella, or D, Scapula? This is very important. It's the Patella. Fuck. He got it. <laughs> and he's gone. Oh, oh, no! Oh, no! Oh, no! Oh, no! Oh, there you go. Who wants to be a millionaire? So, Felter's the man. He knew. So Mareko won, um, right. but if only we Jeff had made that. If only Jeff had made that phone call beforehand, we would. I know. Be better winner. <laughs> Stelter's the man. I'm gonna have to text him now just to let him know <laughs> that we're sorry. Man. Yeah. You're the man. Oh, <laughs> okay. So shall we crack on with um, with more questions? Um, Mareko, do you want to read the next one on the list there? Yeah. This next one is from Rhymer Knives. It says, hey, man, can I ask you a question? How do you maintain an even dark finish on Boulder Damascus patterns? I etch in coffee after my final finish, and I us and it usually comes out good. Sometimes the finish can be a bit weak and can lighten up after any sanding. Thanks for the great content. All right. First off, I do no sanding after my coffee. I do no sanding. I, I hardly even touch it with a paper towel. I My goal is to pull it out of that coffee, neutralize it in the baking soda water, take a look at it, and it's fine. All I gotta do is get a little wax on there, very gently, get some wax on there, call it good, and then sharpen it after that. So if you're doing any sanding on it after, you probably didn't set yourself up properly beforehand you, sh you shouldn't be doing any sanding afterward got you got you um i won't have an answer for that question um I jeff have, i have a question i'm not going to answer that question i have no i, no, I want a follow-up question i just noticed you know i remember when you first started doing the coffee etches you were doing them in short bursts like when i say short bursts like half an hour half an hour mm, sure. i've been noticing some people soak it in coffee for overnight yeah yeah you... so when i that's what i'm doing now too i do longer soaks in a cold solution so when i first started doing coffee i was always doing it hot and sometimes but the problem with doing it hot or sorry doing it hot you can get a really good you can get it good results but they're hit or miss because it's very easy to maybe maybe the the solution's too hot or you let it soak for too long and then things start going sideways and the 15 and 20 starts taking out color the whole thing blacks out that is not what you want i found i discovered accidentally that by soaking in cold instant coffee solution that i can get more consistent results every now and then it still comes out kind of funky it's all right because it doesn't take much to take it back off it does take time to get it back on but usually after the second round, sometimes the third round, it, it looks good. Um, so I've been doing colder with a fresh batch of instant coffee basically every time. Because honestly, in the whole scheme of the knife making costs, $6 of instant coffee is a super cheap, right? And so I just make a new batch every time. I, I heat it up to do the mix and then I cool it back down and then I don't put my knife into it until the blade until this until the the solution is at least at room temperature or has been allowed to chill down to like refrigerator temperature um I've I've had good results with either cold coffee coming out of the fridge getting poured into a container and then doing it at room temperature or putting the knife in the in the coffee in the container in the fridge and letting that do its thing overnight too Cool. And you can get 10% off your Nescafe by going to nescafe.com and using Mareko's Coffee Etch as your 100%. promo code. That's it. Jeff, do we have any unsolicited advice? Yes, we do. Unsolicited advice. Uh, I know you didn't ask, or there's all sorts of different ones at this point. It's just unsolicited advice. Um, this one comes from, uh, and you can. You can send them, you can DM them to us on Instagram, uh, Knife Talk Podcast on Instagram. 
It's that easy. Uh, LS Blade says, I know you didn't ask, but here's an easy way to cut your rhino wet. Uh, hand sanding paper into uniform pieces. Screw a hacksaw blade to a board with washers under the blade to space it off the board and slide your sandpaper between the blade and the board and pull up. Look at you. Ah, that's a good idea. I use a, uh, I have a paper cutter, so whatever. Yeah. I it, dull, it, it dull scissors and stuff like that, like almost immediately. Yeah. Right. It's not the best. Right. Um, Oh boy, this one comes from Lucas Hansen. I know you didn't ask, but check check out your local senior center. Senior center. No, this isn't a crack at old man Jeff. The senior center <laughs> near me near near the senior center near me only requires you to be eighteen over and over to join. They have a full shop with anything you might need as a new maker to get started in your craft. Wood cutoffs that have been discarded from other projects can be salvaged and used for scales. Plus, there's bound to be more unsolicited advice from the actual old timers. <laughs> so feel free to stop by your old. I don't know what country this is because I swear to God, if you show up looking in the dumpster at the senior center are in here, they're gonna put they're gonna put the hurt on you. They put their hands on you. That's the craziest unsolicited advice I've heard of. <laughs> Definitely sign up to be um, one of the old. You only have to be 18 and over, older to be a, to the a senior member. citizen. I mean, because what are you here for? I'm here for the wood. Obviously, I'm here for your scraps. <laughs> uh, I, was, I was too late there with that. Uh, uh, that's what she said. With I'm here for the wood, but hey. Uh, one of the, actually one of the listeners who's on in the in the Instagram in the chat, uh, Ilor Hudiyama, didn't get it right, my man. Says here's a quick tip: you have if you have a slight bend after heat treatment, you can fix it by <laughs> sandblasting. Why are you giggling, you little bastard? Just saying. You don't, well, you don't have a problem with it. You don't have a problem with a slight, slight bend. bend. You Just got a slight left, bend. Slightly. This actually, besides the fact that it is it clearly a well, you know, wiener reference. Um, <laughs> if you can fix it by sandblasting the inside of the bend so it stretches, you can also fix minor corkscrew bends and other funky mess. Um, and it's great for sand uh, blasting off hard scale for better belt economy. So hand hand uh sandblasting is your friend yeah yeah just just before you go any further top dog is just giving us a tip in the uh in the chat um getting wood flooring samples for free and when i first started out i did that a lot um you can get wood flooring sample whether it's oak or, or chestnut or those kinds of things if you're using solid hardwoods um, lots of places will give you um yeah free samples and also kitchen counters as well so like big thick stuff so if you're doing hidden tanks you need something really thick um, most manufacturers of like kit, you know, hardwood kitchen counters, you can send off, you know, a few dollars and they'll give you a box full of samples and they work really well for knife handles too. Jack Pine Blade Works says, unsolicited advice uh, when drilling holes for 3 16 pin stock, use a number 11 drill. Then when using eighth inch pins, use a number 30 bit. bit. They eliminate the need for reaming and sanding down your pins. <laughs> You just are, the em- you just it. the emphasis on reaming. It's just well, I did that for you. I did that for you. <laughs> um, here's uh, Entiot River Forge says, "Hey man, I know you didn't ask, but I heard the advice about using a reamer for <laughs> handle pin filament fit fitment." He said, "Fitment." I uh, let me start that over. I know you didn't ask, but I heard the advice about using a reamer for handle pin fitment and have a quicker method. I primarily use a three millimeter pin stock and found that a 31 drill bit fits perfectly. If I'm using a quarter inch lanyard hole, I use an F size drill bit. These goddamn fucking advice. Is, here's news. some advice. <laughs> Have a good question. This is awful. Um, <laughs> the drill bits are super cheap, like one to three bucks per. Uh, oh, who gives a fuck? I'm going down a swift. I, I, <laughs> don't give me millimeters, guys. No one's writing it down. Uh, <laughs> Swift Steel and Forge says, hey, cuties, I know you didn't ask, but when you finish heat treatment in your kiln or forge, have a couple of potatoes wrapped in foil ready to put them in while they cool down. <laughs> Roast jacket potatoes for dinner. Good idea. <laughs> I like that. Built sharp. We were talking about grease on your belts. Yeah. Talking and bad jokes. So the- <laughs> Built sharp says grease works great on Scotch Bright, but I've never used it on a regular belt with any success. It helps prevent orange peel on titanium and leaves a better finish because it's all lubed up and slides around easy. 
That's what she said. Um, I've been using um, WD-40 on um, Scotch Bright belts uh, recently. We've talked about this a few times, um, but quite often I'll just forget to do it. And but the difference it makes is huge. It's massive. So I've got like an old grey one, which I think is ultra fine. The Scotch Brights um, just soak that with WD-40, and uh, it right. makes a, it makes a lovely, lovely finish. There's there's something cool just to, before we keep going. There's something cool in the chats. We have someone. We have Bim Bimbro Rocks. Good day from Australia, and right underneath is Andrew Booth saying good evening from the UK. So we're global. This is super cool. Hmm. So yeah. just let if, us know if, where you're from in the chat as well. That'd yeah, be let, cool let, to let see us where know. people are. Hmm. And then, so how in the future, how are we going to get allow people to just? Is we're going to have a stream on YouTube and just do this or? Yeah, I think so. So this uh, currently we're on Facebook and on YouTube, but we didn't get the Knife Talk one approved in time. Um, so it'll be approved okay. for next week. So this is on the Chop Knives YouTube. Next week it'll be on somebody from Sweden. That's cool. Um, so next week it'll be on the Knife Talk YouTube channel. But if somebody if somebody wants to ring in, they can still do as they always have done. So on Instagram, um, give us a call. Lines are open if you want to be on the show. So when this when you rewatch this, is this going to be rewatched? You're going to be able to rewatch it on YouTube. E yes, you will be able to rewatch, and I think it'll reshow the. I'm not sure how live stuff with comments works on YouTube. Maybe some. Yeah, I was going to wonder. If the comments will be in there too, that'd be kind of neat. Yeah, the comments um, will be there, but I'm not sure whether it'll stream in real time, you know, with in sync with the show. I'm not sure. Don't know. We got Australia checking in, Canada, Georgia, Florida, Sweden. Uh, the next piece of unsolicited advice comes from Steve Pellegrino. Unsolicited advice for forging ramps this season. I get struck out again. Um, do not pull out the bulbs. Cut them at the ground level and leave the bulb or the site you harvested will be depleted next year cheers and then he threw a hot take in uh, ramps are overrated <laughs> so he threw in the <laughs> what hot are ramps take. what are ramps? ramps are like wild garlic it's kind of like oh okay you know, well you, you know yeah. like ch you have chives and stuff like that yeah um ramps are uh wild garlic and they're very hot right now but they're like i mean we have a ton of we got a ton of uh people from all over the place we got a message from the the this this we have a message from the services using we're getting a we're getting a high five from the service restream says we have received 100 messages today with the restream chat nice so doing a good nice. job guys gary from scotland has said has anybody tried the broadback game changer belt what's the game changer belt what's do we know what that is we'll have to find out next week we'll have to find out um Morocco, whilst we're talking about um broadback tell us what um grinder you use on a daily well, basis back back in that room my grinding room is where i keep my grinding stuff and in there is where my broadback hangs out and lives and uh i love the machine it's a great sh machine it's super well built built engineered designed by two very talented very smart actually engineers um and make knife makers uh the guys at broadback are super helpful and always up to you know their customer service they're all over it and um you know they're just really great company to to have as a sponsor and and to work with and the machine is awesome i love the flexibility especially um uh, i guess a, as a platform uh, i love the flexibility of being able to to use my own tool arms that i've built myself in that in that um in the broadback machine um i think they did a really smart move by not having to lock people in that way uh it's also super handy when uh like i was just grinding on my sword the other day which now i have to start <laughs> over, over on that has nothing to do with the machine but it was when i was grinding the bevels of the machine it was super sweet to be able to lay that thing over and <laughs> to be able to hold the blade horizontal and draw it along <laughs> what <laughs> it's just just so many references to yeah penises basically um but also we've got some some news <laughs> just in regarding broadback so okay. if you were to buy a broadback and remember you can get your discount using knife talk knife talk five or knife talk 10 knife talk knife 10 10 percent off um you're also put into a draw because they'll be at blade this year where they're invading new products um which i had a sneaky preview of this week which are awesome um but they've got new products but also they're going to be giving away um one of their premium grinders um to somebody who's in that raffle so if you buy a, a a grinder from them make sure you use the discount but also you've got a chance of winning a second machine at blade 
That'd be crazy. Not bad at all. That would be cool. You'd be fully set up two top specs. For sure. That One is never pretty enough. sweet. Yeah, definitely. Definitely. And yeah, WIA Knives just says, wow, exactly. Exactly. So yeah, make <laughs> sure you get on it. Um, get your broad back, Knife Talk 10, get your 10% off and automatically put in yourself in for a draw to win a second machine at Blade this year, which is very cool. There you go. Where were we in the? I say schedule as if we've got a schedule, but uh, can, I, can I read the the lesser oh, feedback ahead. at some point? Yes, yes, about last week. Do that, please. Yeah, yeah, we got you know, we got some we've been getting lots of really great listener feedback, and especially from last week. Uh, Matt Yazel says, Hey guys, I've been listening to the Damn Steel episode, it's been a lot of fun. Congrats on your achievement in this pursuit, hard fought and well earned. I'm I'm sure Matt's a good dude. Um, down the street from me, not too far. Um, is that Matt the and... Wangle? No, no, that's Matt that's Yazel. Matt Yazel, Yazel like Hazel. Yazel like Hazel, okay. Dan Aikman says, that was an awesome show. Coulter said, congratulations, guys. Uh, congratulations, guys. That was at least, in my opinion, the best episode of the podcast you ever put out. Games, interviews, laughs, genuine and solid questions. Just perfect. And then uh, OG Keith, uh, Kyle Heath says, you guys did a fantastic job with the Damn Steel show. Probably my favorite episode of all time. Wow. Wow. There you wow. Go. That and was then... I'm really pleased with that because we didn't do any any sort of testing with that at all, did we? It's the first time we're doing video. Um, and it just really worked. I said time flew by. It just really worked well for us all. And um, we just had lots of fun. It was, it was really good to do. You were in like a flow state. I thought you were on like some performance enhancing drugs because you were like, <laughs> you were like perfect. And then uh, we got Andy Operaz says, What an epic episode. The hooks were fierce and hilarious. The guests that dropped in were fire. So. In the comments, I am the wangle. Guess I'll change my name. <laughs> I wonder if he'll change his handle to I am the wangle. Yeah. That'd be pretty good. Here's a here's a little p funny feedback. I think it was based on uh, this was from uh, the the after show we had a couple weeks ago where you said that uh, you got like the, did the free knife for the Instagram chef. This Chris mm. uh, Ryan Chris says, "Well, it finally happened. I had to get an Instagram chef ask for a free knife to help us help us both promote our brands. I kind of <laughs> feel like it's an accomplishment. Don't worry, I'm not sending him a knife. Uh, what's funny is I will not say who it is." But it happens to be an ex NFL player who's trying to become a foodie influencer. Keep up the good work, champs, and thanks for keeping us laughing in our shops. And I think I, I wrote to him. I'm right. I wrote to him. I'm gonna keep grinding and send those invoices, which might be a good uh, good mantra. <laughs> yeah. Keep grinding and send those invoices. Keep billing them, everybody. Keep billing them, everybody. Yeah. Every week I'm getting um, influencers saying yes. You know. Send me a knife and I'll make you famous kind of thing. And it's, yeah, it never, never happens. Never happens. No. <laughs> Before we go, shall we take a few more questions? Uh, Mareko, if you can read maybe the next one on the list or something. Unfortunately, I don't have the list of questions because I don't have enough screens sure. here to put up the questions. Yeah. Yeah. So. <laughs> <laughs> I got it. This one is from Black Cap Blades. He says, hey, man, can I ask you a question? Is there a reason why people who aren't forging in their, in their maker's marks don't always mark both sides of the blade. It seems like a better idea than trying to figure out if there is a correct or incorrect side to mark. So mark both sides instead of trying to decide. Yeah, we, we talked about that in the past, haven't like? we? So there's the, yeah, there's the, the logo side and what they call the shy side. Um, and I think traditionally it was for sort of presentations. So if you go to a knife show, you generally see people's knives all facing the same direction and the logo on one side. Um, Quite obvious why you wouldn't do it if you're stamping in stamping in your um, logos because, um, yeah, it's going to deform the blades and all sorts. But um, we talked about this in the past because I think the three of us we've been you know fortunate enough to have you know sort of chefs who may be on TV that kind of thing using our blades, um, and it does make sense to have a logo on both sides because we're thinking of you know if you want your knife to be on TV and seeing people see the logo that kind of thing. Um, it makes sense to have it on both sides because really they're going to be shooting um, the, the image of the outside of the knife where you don't have the logo. So it does make sense to have it on both. But I think I think it's just tradition, really. Um, yeah, I, 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 I always put mine with the with the pointy side 
<laughs> the pointy i'm a knife maker i call it the pointy side <laughs> um to the to the left um and when you take forward saying it would take twice as long you need a laser mate you need a laser it takes seconds you can't um, stamp both sides that's crazy yeah you I mean, couldn't stamp both sides yeah I mean, definitely you couldn't um but I, I I think it's tradition. That's the reason. I mean, Jeff, what do you think? Why... I can't believe you like tradition. I thought you hated it. What did you say? Tradition is what? What, what was that expression we heard a while ago? Tradition is like it's the death of creativity. Oh, mm. the death of creativity. I'll tell you, uh, this is very, I've always put it on the right side because when I was a kid, my dad always used to say, always step with your right foot first. And here's what I've learned. I the the knives I've been making for right-handed people when they put the knife down the right side is facing up and I know that because I get messages people saying I saw your knife on America's Test Kitchen uh in the new uh in one of the latest hey listen and in regards to in regards to whether it matters or not whether or not they see it or, or not hmm. I had my knife this week was on Regis and not Regis and Kelly anymore it's it's Kelly and some that dumb fuck uh, Ryan Seacrest, <laughs> right? Ryan Seacrest and Kelly. So my knife was on that, but nobody saw it because it's like you know nobody cares. But but when I was on the the knife I had on the same knife was no a different knife was on Jacques Pepin. He's right handed, so when he puts it down, he puts it inside. He puts it on the inside, so then mm. you can see the knife. You can see the the touch mark. So I've, I I stay with the right side. I don't give a shit about. I don't give a shit about it. What you call it? But it does make you say. I mean, I. Brian Seacrest and Kelly is one of the biggest morning shows in the United States. Nobody called me on that. I just happened to know because the person who was on it was there. So don't fall for the banana in the tailpipe of I'm going to be on these TV shows and you're going to get these phone calls. It doesn't happen. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah. I've always, I've been putting my, ma or not always put it, my maker mark on the right side. I, I used to always put it on the left side and a lot of makers that I was friends with when I first started out was like, that's the presentation side, hmm. the presentation side, I whatever the hell that means. Like, I didn't. so, but I did come to the realization that most people are right-handed and when they lay their knife down, this is from my own experience, using a knife, I lay the knife down to grab something or do something else, else the right side of the blade is facing out. And I realized if, you know, for whatever reason, if it happens to be photographed for a newspaper or or magazine or happens to be on TV, there might be a chance that somebody might catch it. Now, right. I would say for somebody like like Craig and Jeff, who who have names for their knives, maybe you put the company brand name on one side, but then you put like El Capitan on the left side. Um, so that way, you know. Either way, it gets laid down. Maybe somebody sees El Capitan Chef's knife. They're like, "What the hell?" They can Google that and say, "What the hell is that?" And then they'll find you that way too. Hmm. Instead of having this, because I think it would look ridiculous to have the exact same maker's mark on both sides. That to me, that would say like you didn't know what the fuck you're doing. You don't know what to do, so you just did it on both sides. It seems very un uh, thoughtless and unintentional. And so, but if you have names for your work, I think it totally makes sense to put your maker's mark on one side and then the name on the other side yeah but what i've done in the past is put my logo on one side and on the other side then um reference the steel the type of steel sure. in small letters um, but what i found is it looks almost like a factory knife then it doesn't necessarily hmm. look um handmade and and that that's that's a sort of something that i'm always sort of on the edge with you know whether to do certain things whether it looks too professional or whether you want to dial it back which is, which is ridiculous because you want it to be as as good as possible but, you know things like that don't really make a difference to the function of the knife um sure. but yeah it's just, it is a, that is a weird thing whether you want things to look as if it's manufactured or whether you want things to look handmade and, and you see some people doing you know things people will you know put some people will take their you know their finishes to like 320 and stop and you know for them that's the differentiator between handmade and something that's made you know polished in a factory and i can sort of see that but i, I personally i think they're cutting corners there but it, it, yeah that is that is a weird one so yeah I, I suppose i'm saying this to the people in the chat there is there things that you don't do which you think could could show the knife has not been handmade. It's, it's a strange. I don't quite know how to word this because I've had a drink. But, uh, but um, yeah, is that is that maybe final flourishes that 
you want to do where you think, well, if I do that, it may necessarily won't look so handmade. And is that a good thing or a bad thing? It's two uh, things. One is when you read, you read from from left to right. So if you're putting it on the left side, you're reading the name from the front to the back. So you're losing the you're losing the the flow of the knife. Mm. When I I cuz I I I've put on different sides of the knife and when I'm reading it, I'm reading it if you do it the wrong other way, it looks weird because you're actually your eye is is not going out. It's coming back in. Yeah. I don't like that. And Dustin, number two I, is sorry, Dustin, I think you mean Jimpin with a J, not Gimpin, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> Gimpin's very different. <laughs> yeah. Gimping is very different. And in regards to factory versus non factory, I just got my uh Resolute Mark Three from Aaron Goff. Mm. That thing is better than you think. His execution is absurd. Absurd. It's unbelievable. I'm it's it's it makes you want to just like, all right, I'm gonna start making like arrows or something like that, something else. <laughs> they're so well they're but it, it, they're so well put together, but it makes me realize personally, I want to see a little I want to see a little bit more humanity. For me, mm. for my stuff, but like, it is extraordinary. It does not look like a guy put it together. Aaron, it's all—it's all, it's all machi- He just presses print. It's all machines, right? Yeah, there's right, no, right. there's no, there's no work involved there. He, he just press it. It's easy. It's easy what he does. Now I know why <laughs> you're j- off the X Y Z podcast. <laughs> to be fair, I'm, I'm joking. Aaron's work is—he takes everything to the nth degree. It's, it's, um. Yeah, incredible precision and attention to details. Incredible. So that that was a flippant joke. I'm, I'm afraid. Of course. Um, Gary has said selling the logo as an NFT. Let's not go there, Gary. Let's not go there. I don't even understand any of that stuff. This isn't the uh, handmade podcast. If we want to talk about NFTs, let's call Paul Pinto up. Why don't you call Paul Pinto up? That would be the thing. Call Paul Pinto up and have him explain it, and you can hang up on him when he picks he's up. He's there in his TikTok leggings, isn't he? You know, he's, he's, he's sitting at home. Good old TikTok leggings. Going through, going through TikTok. We know what's going on. Uh, Top Dog has got another question. Um, I've started forging more than stock removal at the moment. Um, I like the textured finish, but man, I wish I started doing this when I was a younger man. Mm. So to the old man of the group, Jeff, is this why you do mainly stock removal? No, not at all. I would rather <laughs> forge everything. I, I would rather forge everything, but I, my customers like you know clean lines. They don't like the forge scale. They're intimidated by it, and then and they like stainless steel. Yeah, there yeah. you go. Fair enough. Fair enough. Okay, I think we're getting to that point of the show where maybe we need to um just maybe just chill out a little bit. Cool. <sighs> Hmm. So, what we want to happen this week, um, Mareko? Let Let's start with you. What's the uh, What's the big dream for the week? Uh, the big dream for the week is to actually get the my grinding room kind of put back together. I had to pull everything off the walls for all that electrical work that was going on. We got our uh, green sticker, which lets us move forward. So I got to get everything put back together, and. Um, and get back to work i i have a, a, a kind of like another video thing i want to do around damascus making damascus so um i'm gonna get started filming that and kind of kind of scripting that i keep calling it scripting but it's like just laying it out like figuring out how i'm gonna do the shots and everything um and uh yeah hopefully that gets going next week as well as also just standard knife work getting getting knives put together and sent out still and um yeah just work (laughs) more than anything just working cool (sighs) jeff hopes and dreams for the week i spent all week hand sanding i I hand sanded 21 knives and they all look good and i'm glad i'm done and i'm gonna Next week, I'm putting them all together, and then I'm hoping to. That's going to be a big. That's going to be a big. Getting those finished is going to be huge because we want to start making forks. We want to start making 
knives we want to make we're going to start doing more knives like the one that just went out to uh to elon hall we're going to be doing more made knives and we're going to sell them uh you know as they come out instead of the lead times and stuff like that we're kind of closing i'm closing i'm closing everything up which is really really nice and then uh, oh yeah and then 21 blades yeah must have an arm like a like a hooker's elbow but if like your a hands... hooker's elbow? What? What do you mean, like a hooker's elbow? How good you is, can imagine, a hooker's you can elbow it's the hooker's elbow? Same, it's the same action. Oh, um, oh, I see, I see, I see, I see. I was wondering what made your hand sanding easy. Any any tips there? I would say that if it wasn't for Indasi USA's Rhino Wet Red Line, I'd be up the creek. And if you go to Texas Ferry Supply and get some Rhino Wet, get some 220, get some 400, 800, 1000 grit. And you put in promo code knife talk 10, you're going to get 10% off your entire order from Texas Ferry Supply. Evan and the guys have lots of stuff. They got epoxy. They have knife supplies. They have uh, they have everything you're going to need to make yourself squared away. But the red line rhino wet, everybody who gets it says, why did I wait? Why did I wait? And it, it's just exceptional. I, I cruise through um, all these different. Gr- I mean, if it wasn't for the rhino wet, I'd been sunk. It would have been super sunk. So go get yourself 10% off with Knife Talk 10. But back to, so a week from now, I will have had my doctor's appointment. So if I sound a little bit rough around the edges, it might be because I've actually gotten the hook. We'll find out. So I've been <laughs> fasting. I've been, I haven't had booze in almost six weeks. I haven't, I haven't been eating dairy. I mean, I'm like, I've been losing weight. I've been like, I want to get a full report. So next Friday morning, I'll I'll uh, I'll have my blood work done and everything squared away. I do not know if he's going to stick a finger up my ass, but I'm assuming if not, when, why not? You know, what's wrong? Well, you don't like me or something? It was just a request I, that you've made. Okay. I mean, I mean, what did I do something wrong? Or is this, you know, uh, if you had your second injection yet, by the way, you did you too? I have. Oh, Marek, have you had your second one? Wow. Two weeks ago. Jeez, over here in Europe, they're, they're saying six to eight weeks is the best time, you know, to wait between the first and second. Whether six saying, to eight weeks? Whether they're saying that just to delay things, they've got more time, I don't know. But that, mm. that's what they're advising, yeah. yeah. I've got my you know, first got my first one the end of next week, anyway. You know, I was when I was talking to Tomer, he was saying in Barcelona, it's like he doesn't think he's going to get it until September. It's crazy over there. Oh, wow. Yeah, well... I, I shouldn't He's be pouring getting... another beer. <laughs> <laughs> I shouldn't be getting mine yet, but um, I just made the phone call to the doctor on the off chance, and he was like, "Well, yeah, we'll stick your name down." So, uh, whether we're jumping the queue, I don't know. But yeah, I mean, they're they're doing sort of over fifties at the moment here in France, um, but the uptake is so little that there's always doses available for people who want it because most right. of the French are turning it down, which is bonkers. bonkers. Now I know why you don't dye your hair anymore. You're slipping that over over 50 crowd. That's what it is, yeah. Yeah. I don't blame you. Okay. So uh my dream for the week is um I've got two knives that I want to finish this weekend, so they'll be available from Monday, which are the Alien DNA and the um Super Light. Um, then I says, we, I talked earlier about doing a, a live with a chef that I've supplied a bunch of knives for. Um, I've never done that before. And I, I think it's a good way of sort of getting across to a different audience. Um, he's, you know, he's quite a well-known chef. So a lot of other restaurants and chefs are following him who are my sort of core customers. So, so it makes sense. So yeah, I'm looking forward to doing that. Um, and that's pretty much it. Um, I'll be starting on another restaurant order on Tuesday that's scheduled for. Um, and I've got another, I've scheduled the time to do another one-off to sell for the following Monday. Um, and as everything I do at the moment has a sort of, the one-offs all have a theme. Um, so after these two, the next one is called Burgundy after the wine. Um, so yeah, it's, it's, there's, there's, there's quite a bit going on sort of outside of knives. So it's, it's difficult for me to get time in the shop at the moment, but that's going to be changing in September. Um, thankfully, because uh, the kids will be in school, which is nice. Um, so yeah, there's 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 a lot going on. Um, it's become a new part of the week for me. Prep for 
this podcast because we're changing up the podcast every week at the moment, it seems like, which is really good. It keeps it fresh and exciting. So um, hopefully you've all enjoyed uh, this version of the show. This will be live as a, an audio podcast again on um, on Monday as normal. Um, but just before we go, we've, we've got a hot take here as well. Jeff carries this podcast with his foul language and sarcastic comments. I'm with you, Jeff. See, I'm wow. with you is in, in quotes, so obviously that's sarcastic. So he's being <laughs> sarcastic. Um, but I think that's a show. I think that's a show. So thank you all very much for, for listening. This will be live on Monday. Do you know what? We didn't have a single live call in this week on Instagram. We did. We had Will. We hung we up had on Will, it. but we called him. We called him. <laughs> So yeah, that was that was a bit different for us, but anyway. This is also we're going to have to get used to seeing each other and you know, this is I'm there's so much to look at. It kind of got to fuck it me is. up a bit. There's a lot of bells and whistles going on here. So, yeah. yeah. Those guys who are watching live, you get to see, you know, just the preview window that we see, but we see a bunch of other stuff around, including all the chat. Um, yeah. Uh, I think Robert is going to ask you out any second, Jeff. Wow. He's, he's wondering what you're up to tomorrow night, maybe. Who wants your address? <laughs> um, but hey, what she said. that's what oh, she said. Chris Cash took from Chris Cash of the Accident Podcast stuck around for the whole goddamn show. I'm stunned. I'm stupefied. Chris is the man. I love Chris Cash. If you guys are in the United States, all right. I'm gonna give a. We're gonna pip out Chris. If you're in the United States and you're looking for tools. If you're looking for anvils, if you're looking for power hammers, if you're looking for drift, drifts and drill presses, if you're looking for real shit, he's the fucking dude. If you need something used or old, he's the guy. Mount <laughs> Phillip Metal Works. Used or old. Yeah. <laughs> he's a sl real slapper. You're pimping yourself out? <laughs> How dare you, sir. Dare right. You. That's the show. Thank you all for listening. And um, for those in the know, we may speak to you soon. This show is brought to you by The Makery, the podcast network for makers. You're the fucking man. Well, well Craig, well. you're the fucking I, that man. Went that went surprisingly well. Super smooth. Dude, you're I was waiting man. for you to, like, Pull that tiny keg over and just take a drink off the tiny keg. You got to do that <laughs> next week. I'll do that next week. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Or, or just like run a hose from it and do like a keg bong. Yeah. <laughs> but it's Cheers. Craig, you are the fucking man. Be You're the fucking man. We get problems every week with Squadcast with connection issues. This week we're doing live video. Right. We're also getting a stream of the chat, and that's worked perfectly well. And we yeah. haven't had a single, single hiccup. Dude. You're the fucking man. You no. made this look so pro. It's, it's not me. It's, it's the software. It's 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 phenomenal. It's amazing. Yeah, I love but it. You press the buttons to do the things. You, I mean, I'm not doing any of that. No, it's all good. <laughs> I can't do that. No, it's all good. <laughs> so, so what? What do we think? Shall we put this keep this live on YouTube as an episode each week, and we put the podcast live each week? Then, but I mean, I, I assume we're putting the audio every Monday live anyway, which we always have done. But right. do we also put this live as a show on? Do we wait till Monday? That that that's the thing. Now mm. I don't know. I don't. Okay. I mean, hmm. it's up to you. I mean, it's. I don't know. Can you hold it off? Can you hold it off to be put on till Monday? I don't know. I don't know. I think so. I think so. I think because the audience wants you to keep it, keep it, keep it, uh, keep it live. Keep it live on YouTube. I think yeah. the people who listen to podcasts don't watch YouTube. Am I wrong? Maybe I'm wrong. Maybe I mean, I, I wouldn't. I wouldn't watch. I wouldn't. I don't necessarily know if I'd watch. Hmm. I'd wait till Monday. Guess somebody wrote. Somebody yeah. also wrote. What am I going to? What am I going to listen to on Monday now? That's true. Yeah, it's but I problem. mean, we've had what forty people, you know, doing this live. Solid. That's yeah, but right. that's nothing like the audience that we get. You know, but so obviously it's still going sure. live on Monday. That's the that's the core audience. Um, but whether we put this video live now as well on Monday, I don't know. You, oh, when we're being told somebody in the chat said we can unlist it until Monday, so this wouldn't come out until the audio's up anyway. I think that's that would be a good move. That's what Joe wrote when he was doing his live YouTube uh, podcasts. He would cut it and then 
and then it wouldn't go live until the podcast actually had been edited the intros and outros and all the advertisements been added and then when that was launched then he would make the video available too right okay this is amazing (laughs) it looks good in fact it sounds good i'd say this has worked better than it did with the dharma steel software because this spits out automatically to youtube to facebook the people watching haven't had to log in in any way. They literally just click the link and they're, and they're away. Right. Um, somebody's made a point there about um, we need to announce this better. Um, we purposely well, didn't this, because this is just first. happened. We just needed to make it work. And now we know it works. We, we certainly can do. Um, Gary, get that YouTube paper. <laughs> There's not much uh, YouTube <laughs> paper, believe me. Um, we, we've got a call. Should we, should we take the call? Yeah, of course. I hope it's Stelter. Josh, it's, it's, it's... hello, Josh. Can you hear me? What's up, Josh? <laughs> we finished the show. We finished the show, man. You fucking doing? late, bro. I I just saw that you finished it. That's why I'm calling. I didn't want to be on there. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's good. What do you have uh, to say? Hey, I don't have. I don't have any. Go ahead. What do you have to say for yourself? Oh, I just called to say hi to you guys. I uh, don't have any specific question or anything, but I just want to <laughs> just wanted to say what's up and hope you guys have a good weekend and don't work too hard or any of that that BS. Oh, what a guy! I, I think what we're all guy. working. We're sweet. all working this weekend, unfortunately. So, so what are you up to? What's what's the time there, Josh? Anyway, because it's Mm-mm. you're way behind me. It's four forty four forty five here. A.M. P.M. PM. Okay. Ohio time. Sorry. Sorry. I'm all over yeah. the but we're in so many different time zones and stuff. So what you got planned for the weekend? Uh nothing actually. I I got my second <laughs> <laughs> Oh baby. <laughs> it never gets old. It never gets old. The king the king is back. The king is still here. King is still here. He was oh, waiting the beach this weekend. I'm not I think he weekend. was waiting for that, surely. Surely sure. he was waiting for that. He gave me two opportunities hug. not to. You, you man, it never fails. The hook is good. <laughs> there it is. The fans love it. And Matt the Wangle hook. says, Matt the Wangle says, there it is. Here comes the hook. <laughs> Matt the Wangle. Robert Baker says, here comes the hook in three, two. <laughs> so funny. I, what I'm really enjoying is the chat, seeing people being able to chat to us, but right. it, it is a huge distraction as well. So, <laughs> yeah, it, it's going to take a bit of a while to get used to that. Definitely. You know what? We're going to work it out. Like we work everything out. Yeah, this is yeah, going to be sure. fine. This is, it sounded good. You know, the one thing I, I, the one thing I didn't have that I was used to in squad cast is I can see the time, how, how long we've been doing it. That's the only thing, but I don't give a fuck about that. Yeah. Oh, I do know. see that. So do you not see in the top left? You don't see the time and the amount of viewers. You see the amount of viewers. That's you it. You don't see it's the been, time. The amount of viewers has been good. It's been better than Instagram. It's been like 38 between around 40 all the whole episode yeah for the whole episode yeah but been, like i said we didn't really promote this much at all you know literally five minutes before going live so no yeah. oh, oh well um the my man. biggest my biggest worry is morocco's connection whether that was going to hold out and it's it's held out like perfectly well perfectly well so we know we're all good you um, look good in that shop too did you get a haircut no you, you didn't get a haircut craziness? no oh i thought i figured you cut your all your hair <laughs> here's johnny here's johnny <laughs> uh no it's it's well lit as well it looks really cool yeah it looks good, good in there looks good yeah so right. i'm i'm starting my shop this week now um in the new house so um i've got to there's walls going up and i'm dividing it into they say there's gonna i've been wondering how i'm gonna split up you know certain machines and all that kind of because i want a dirty space and a clean space um, it turns out I'm going to get three spaces now. So I'm going to get the uh, the dirty space, which is, you know, the grinding. Um, then the clean space, which is going to have, you know, the 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 CNC and the laser and all the, you know, the clean electronic-y stuff. And maybe like the hand sanding bits and all that kind of stuff. Um, but then I'm also having the mezzanine. And up there will be all the um, stuff for this, stuff for the show. So, nice. Yeah, That's so- going to be the, mez- the mezzanine is going to be for the... Um... The fun stuff. It's going to be for the podcast. Well, for the podcast and just, you know, for my general sort of computery stuff, you know, and, you know, my, you know, you know, 
guitars and all that kind of stuff up there. Yeah. Nice. Um, so yeah, so it's yeah, I'm looking forward to it. It's going to be good. Boxy, good now you are basically e men Twitch streamers. I don't know what any of that means. Um, <laughs> e men Twitch streamers. You'll take that. You'll take that. And be it. So I think what we need to do now is speak to our current sponsors and get them maybe to see if they've got any ads or whether they want to record themselves talking about, because it's it's a bit weird when we play like a a jingle for their ad and when it's just us looking at the screen. What weird. about like some banners? Can we just have banners? Yeah, yeah, I'm sure. Yeah, we could do that. Yeah, we could just put a banner up. Um, you could just put a banner on like the bottom corner of the background or something. Yeah. Yeah, we could do that. Yeah, yeah, and we could have I a promo it's... promo code on screen then as well. Yeah, that would be cool. Cool. It, I'm 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 very you. Last week was so much fun that I was like, I was like, I, I, it's too bad it's going. I, too bad we're stopping. I, f- I feel like we're going to keep going, mm. and it was really so much fun. And this is great. This is going to be amazing. You know. Yeah, I'm going to have to get I, more comfortable with it. But we normally have like. Our structure, don't we? We normally do our question, our intros, questions, then tips, um, mix it in with sponsors, and then we'll do our, you know, our dreams for the week. Um, we sort of lost our way structure-wise today, which which isn't a bad thing anyway, I don't think. But I think it's just because there is literally so much going on. But that could be, you know, but we good, could be good loose thing in itself. Yeah, I mean, we have so itself. much. We didn't hit everything anyway. No. We could be we'll be loose and I like the idea of having the chat people put in questions. Yeah. I like that, the idea yeah. of interacting directly with the people in the chat. You know, Definitely. I think that's amazing. Yeah. What they're saying we need to get Brian to make some video spots to compliment his voiceovers. He's busy. Brian's yeah, busy. He's got plenty on. He's busy. Um, boxes has to love it. Google e girls. I it's probably not a good thing to do. Yeah, seriously. <laughs> I can't <laughs> imagine <laughs> what it is, but I don't think it's a good thing. Yeah, I love. So you can't pull in one of these chat people, right? I can't. Like, but what yeah. I can do is send a link. I could send the link because there's no login involved. As soon as they hit the link, they're in the chat. Um, could do that, I suppose. Um, yeah, that was nice about hopping, wasn't it? Just being able to drag people in, and they were they were in the show with us. That was nice. Would be great to like get like I know we said we'd get maybe get Quentin on. Mm. It'd be great to do like you know mm. now we can do interviews with people. We can get up more. to 10, 10 guests in this, so we could Damn. it could be yeah that would be difficult to do because you know room of ten people chatting is a nightmare. But what what you could do is we could have some sort of like a like a prize where you could be in the live studio audience, and then you get a link and then you just mute them. Yeah, you know what I mean. You yeah, yeah, like yeah. There's there, tons there, there, of tons of great ideas. Do. Plenty we could do. Um, David is saying, Jeff, your daughter's bass is awesome. Cool. Thank you. Cool. Right. I, th- I think that's a show. Should we, should we end it on that? Because we're getting to, we're yeah. getting to the end of the night. Um, but anyway, thank you. Lovely to speak to you both again. Um, Congratulations. Do, do you know what we, I'm just thinking now, what we can do, because we've got the ability to pull up pictures and videos, that kind of thing. Um, not that I think we should be rating people's work or anything, but I think if people have got like a like a charity knife or something like that, we could always pull up a picture and you know we mm. could we could maybe pimp it out a little bit, you know. Um, yeah. yeah, that that could maybe work. I'm I'm amazed. This is amazing. You've done a great job. Great job. Cool. Thank you. It worked. It worked. That's the main thing. Right. Thank you all for watching. Um, we still got 38 people watching, and we're just talking sh- literally shit. <laughs> But anyway, thank you all. I shall speak to you all very soon. Cheers. Good oh, man. Morocco and Jeff, if you, when you leave, if you can just keep open your browsers just for a little bit, because it's going to send me the audio and stuff like that. So you sure want thing. us to just, what do you want us to do? Just like you did with Squadcast. So when you finish, just leave your browser open for just 10 minutes while you tidy up whatever you need to do. Um, and it'll whiz over that audio to me then automatically. You don't need to do anything. Just leave your, leave your browser open. So we do press leave, though. Yeah, press leave, then just leave it. Okay. Leave it that way. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Cool. Very cool. Thank you all for Very watching. good. Excellent. Bye, guys.